Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to create list item with SharePoint REST API using Postman tool. In our earlier session, we have configured the Postman tool. Now from this session onward, we are going to use the Postman tool to create the list item, read the list item, update the list item and delete the list item. So going further in the upcoming sessions, we are going to perform all these operations. For this session, we are going to first create the list item with SharePoint REST API. But prior to performing the operations, I wanted to show you what is the basic steps you have to follow whenever you are working with the REST API. So let's look into those steps. So the first step, we must have to get the endpoint where we want to perform the operation. The second step is the identify the request headers. Whenever we are hitting the endpoint, we must have to specify the request headers. The third point is we must have to identify the request body. Whenever we are sending the request to the endpoint, we must have to specify the body of the request because the endpoint is expecting some of the information. On the basis of that, the endpoint will return the response. In the step four is we need to specify the access bearer token. So now let's proceed further and we will perform all these steps to create the list item into the SharePoint using SharePoint REST API with the help of Postman tool. So guys, I am inside the Postman tool and in our last session, we have generated the access token if you remember. So this is the token which we have generated in our last session. So now let's create a new HTTP request and over here we need to specify the endpoint so what is our endpoint we need to tell that https and here we need to specify our root site collection url vby62 this is my tenant name and over here we need to tell sharepoint.com and then we need to specify sites and where my data is it is at sp exercises and then we need to specify underscore api slash web slash lists then we need to tell that get by title we need to specify the name of our sharepoint list so over here we need to specify our sharepoint list what it is so it if you remember that we have given a name called event registration close it then we need to specify items so this is our endpoint one thing you should remember that whenever you are working with sharepoint rest api this part is going to remain constant minus this one this is going to be the dynamic one because your list name is going to be changed project by project and requirement by requirement and remaining thing is going to be the same. So you must have to remember that underscore API slash web slash list get by title then specify the title name slash items these thing is going to be remain same. Another point is that this part is going to change as per your project. So this is very important. Now let's proceed further. So we have done a step one that is we get the endpoint. Now the second step. So let's do that. For the second step, I need to go inside headers. And over here, we need to specify the headers value. So basically, what we generally tell that, we will tell that except this is the key you need to specify. And that is going to be common for any of the request. And over here, you need to specify application slash JSON. Then we need to tell another key that is called content hyphen type. This is also going to be the same and over here we need to tell that application slash json and over here we need to specify o data equal to verbose so this is the information we need to specify over here so this is our step two where we have specified request header now we will go and specify the request body so for the request body i need to go inside the body here and then i need to select raw and over here we need to specify the curly braces and over here we need to specify a key called underscore underscore metadata this is going to be very common whenever you are working with sharepoint rest api and then you need to specify colon and again we need to specify something called type and then the value is going to be the list name this is going to be very tricky so over here you need to tell that sp dot data we need to specify the list name along with list items we need to specify those particular word so what i mean to say that let's look into that but first let me grab the list name so what is our list name 
let's grab it so our list name is it is event i have done some mistake spelling mistakes so, so let it be so copy this one and make sure that it is spfx exercises for my case i have written wrong so let's correct that so over here we need to specify the list name and one more thing you need to specify over here list item this must be appended with the name of the list and next mistake was here it should be spfx exercises now the next thing we need to specify over here is what data we want to insert inside the list for which columns so for that we need to specify the field name over here field and column name is the same representation as you know that so over here we will tell that title so first thing i will specify title and the value which i want to specify that i will give a name called max then i want to specify the another value is the email if you remember that another field which we were having is the email and the value i will put for email is max at the rate abc dot com and the next field what we are having we are having batch so let's provide the value for that and this is a choice field if you remember that we have provided the choice value over here so let's specify over here and over here we need to tell batch and the value i am going to tell that is going to attend batch 1 and the last one which we are having is the level of knowledge so let's go to the sharepoint and grab the internal name of the field so over here you will see that we have level of knowledge what's its internal name if you click on this sorting then you will find that the name of the field how do you will get it follow the url so over here you will see that there is no spaces but we have given a spaces we have to use this name this is called internal name i hope most of you aware about this so copy this one so you should always use the internal name whenever you are using the sharepoint rest api not the display name this is display name this is internal name very important and come over here specify over here and the value and value is beginner if you remember that beginner now we are done with the body part of the request now the fourth step that is specify the request access bearer token if you remember that we have generated the bearer token and we have pasted it in one of the location this is what we have generated if you haven't pasted i will tell you you need to go again and run the request so how you will do that i will show you again so over here this is the request click on send and then it will return the access token you should copy this one and go back again and paste it over here you should copy the token which is mentioned inside the double quote so copy this one let's go back to the postman and over here i will come back and i need to specify the access token inside the header and over here we need to mention authorization select this key and over here we need to tell that bearer space and paste that token once it is being done we are done with our request creation now we are done with our sharepoint rest api request creation save it and i am going to call it as create list item and this is going to be inside this postman collection save it now let's run it and we got 404 not found error why we got this error because it didn't find a list with the name called event and that is correct even registration now send it again and this time we got 200 okay that means the request is successful let's go to the sharepoint and verify that whether it has created a new entry inside our sharepoint list or not so let's verify it so i am into the sharepoint list i will refresh this one and here we didn't get any kind of entry can you tell me why because we did a mistake over here and it is very crucial so let's look into that we wanted to create an item over here and instead of that what we are currently doing we are sending the get request so instead of get request we need to select post request now again try to execute this one send 400 bad request and why is it so because of the naming convention over here so to fix this error we need to specify the internal name for with the spaces we are having the name of the list is even space registration there is a space and in sharepoint if you want to represent a space there is a special value for it so you need to tell that underscore x0020 underscore so this will represent the space now save it and again send the request let's do it and this time you will find that we are having 201 that is a 
response for creation so whenever we create any of the item through the rest api then the response is going to be the http status 201 created so now again let's jump into the sharepoint list and validate it now you will see it over here this time our sharepoint rest api query created the record over here and that is what we passed over here you will see that we have specified for title the value max email we have specified max at the rate of abc.com for batch we have specified batch one and the level of knowledge we have specified beginner and this is what i wanted to demonstrate you in this session so guys see you in the next session in the next session we are going to perform another sharepoint rest api query where we will read the data from the sharepoint list using postman tool so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care